So although this course is focused on the foundations of programming, what we like to do is um, we find that a lot of students have interest in game development. So what we've done is we've added kind of a wrapper around a lot of the assignments, which basically turns them into video game assignments. And you're going to be working with graphics and whatnot. But in order to do this in Java, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And we've tried to reduce that workload on your part as much as possible so you can focus on the enjoyment of designing and building and programming your games and not dealing with the nitty gritty of uh, uh, the back end game development side of things that you don't need to know for any time soon. Maybe in the future you will, but not for now. So what we've done is we've built a game engine for you and it will handle a lot of the day-to-day -day operations that is games you know, that is the back end side of game development. Um, it handles the most important aspect, which is game loop, which basically says uh, update and draw, update and draw, update and draw, creates a frame rate. And you can set what that frame rate is, and there's a lot of different options you can deal with, like um, how big the screen is and all these different things, um, how many times per second the screen will draw, all that fun stuff. Uh, but it gives you a basic template to work from, and all you have to do is kind of fill in the blanks and create the logic. There's going to be a lot more on this later on when we get to the more advanced concepts in the course, uh, when we get to the drawing and whatnot. But for now, just know that it acts as a tool that allows you to create the games. It's not built the same way as a standard Java program is that just runs from top to bottom. This one kind of runs from top to bottom, then goes back up to the top and goes again. So top, bottom, back up top bottom back up top bottom and it does this 60 times per second creating a loop which we call a game loop update draw so you update all the information of the game and then you draw that information onto the screen maybe that's moving a character or shooting a bullet or whatever it is so how do we actually use this game engine well very simply so by clicking on the quest that you're on here below here below this quest or sorry inside this quest at the bottom you'll see some download pieces for the Java game engine as well as the library we just need to focus on that game engine project for you and if you're done this quest already in the future and you need to do this again you can go on to Google Classroom and in the Google Classroom section under the about section in the in the downloadable resources when you go to there you're given let me just open it up for you under the downloadable resources you open this and you're going to be shown this file right here this file actually has obviously all the setup for Eclipse but at the bottom all the Java game engine resources and we're going to focus on the first one Java game engine project so this is a basic skeleton of a project that's already set up for you and all you have to do is program your game inside of it and it's pretty straightforward to use, but I'm going to run you through the whole process. Um, and then at the very end, you're going to have the ability to redo this anytime you want. So anytime you want to start a new game, you have to go through this process all over again. Okay, but it's pretty straightforward to do. So we're going to uh, select this. Now I'm in edit mode right now, but uh, you'll be able to just click on it. And I'm going to click on this, and it's going to ask me to save. Yes, I want to save as. Now I'm going to save it into the folder that I created. So my F drive, my CS2, and my programming. Now you, depending on where you want to go with this, um, I like to put it right in here directly. Now actually let's not because there already is one in here. So I'm going to put it up a folder outside of the programming folder. And I'm just going to save it right here. And the reason why I'm doing this is just because otherwise you're going to run into other complications in our demo here. So that's fine. We haven't done anything special outside of that at this point. Here is my folder, my directory, and there's that game.zip folder. So first thing we need to do is extract it. So we're going to say extract files. We can say, actually, we can say extract here. Oh, that did not do what I want. Hold on. That is not what we wanted there at all. Uh, we just got to get rid of all the stuff that we just created. <laughs> I hope that's right. Actually, let me just verify. I don't want to mess anything up. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I added a little bit too much. Got a little overzealous there. So we're just going to get rid of all the stuff that was just added. Delete. And when we extract, sorry, we want to say extract files. And we can call it whatever we want. All right. So for me, I'm just going to call this uh, game demo. 
Okay. Inside of here, and there's our entire project. So we're going to take this game demo and we're going to drop it inside the programming folder. Now inside of here, there it is. Now if we go to Eclipse, we have to go through the import process again because it is not set up properly. So we need to right click on here, import. We're going to say yes, general existing projects in a workspace. Click next. We're going to browse and we got to find that place that we just added it to. So here's game demo. It's underneath my programming folder. I'm just going to hit OK and hit finish. Now I'm going to show you a few things that can happen as a result of doing this. First of all, I want you to notice that there is more folders here than there normally is. So if we look at uh, like our demo project that we created in the previous video, the only thing we have is SRC and then the library. We have those plus a few more. This lib and resources. Uh, this R res resources, this is where you're going to put any images, uh, backgrounds and sprites and sounds, effects, music that you're going to have in your game. You're going to just drop them in there and then you can just right click on here and say refresh and they'll just show up. Great. Doesn't mean they're going to show up in their game, but it means they're part of your project. So, I don't want to get into too many details yet, but we got to make sure everything works. Now what's going to happen is sometimes when you import this there can be some errors depending on whether you're working at home, whether you're working at school and those errors will occur right here on these three lines override, override, and override. If you get an error it might say hey we have a problem with this line please fix it. The fix for that is very straightforward. It doesn't happen all the time but just to make sure that you have the idea and know how to do this you're just going to go to project properties and you're going to choose Java Build Path. Make sure your Libraries tab is selected. Now, under the System Library, we want to edit. And the thing is, we got to make sure this is the right one that's set up. Now, the problem is, is that it will be set up. It will be set up exactly the way that it's supposed to be, but for some reason, Eclipse isn't recognizing it appropriately. So, what we want to do is, we're basically going to say, go to the default finish and go back and then we're going to reset it back up to the way it should be which is the way it started but then Eclipse will actually take the change into effect so we're going to say go to the default click finish hit OK and now we're going to go back through the whole process again project properties build path libraries system library edit but now we want to go back to the way it was and that was right here the Java SE 1.7 and then we hit finish and OK and then everything will be set up fine. So that does happen once in a while but it isn't uh, super consistent but just in case and it will only happen when you first import the project. Once you've saved it and everything like that it should be fine. Um, so that is yeah, that's setting up the game project. Now this is what you're going to be looking at when you first come into your program. When you first come into a Java game project. Let me just kind of get rid of some of these I don't really need this one at all, so we heard of that. Um, so all this stuff is set up for you. Now there's a few different key areas. It goes into these in later videos, so I'm just going to be very quick here. Uh, change this to whatever you want to call your game, and it's going to show up in the window. So if we run our program right now, it'll show up right up here where it says My Game. You can change the size of your window. Right now it's set up to a default of 800 by 600. If you want it to be the full screen size, you can use these two variables here. You can just write screen width here and screen height there. Um, and here, your FPS, this is how fast or how many times per second the game is going to update and draw itself. So we call that a frame rate, frames per second. So all you have to do is just modify those four variables, and that's going to change what your game is going to look like visually. You're going to leave the main section alone because it's what uses all that, but it needs to be there. Just leave it alone. Um, down in here, this is where you work. Load content happens once per program. At the very beginning of your program, it will load. This is where you load all of your images, all of your sounds, set up any data that you need to set up, all that kind of stuff. That happens right there. Remember, it happens once per program. These two program, these two chunks of code down here, update and draw. These are the things that repeat themselves. So 60 times per second, these two commands will execute and work from top to bottom in each one. So it'll go through update all the way from top to bottom, all the code inside. 
and then it'll go to draw and execute all the code from top to bottom and then when it's done draw it'll come back up and do update again and then draw and it just keeps cycling between these two chunks of code these two blocks of code repeatedly until the end of time okay until we decide to break the program so that is your game loop that is your uh, Java game project and then once you're good to go there you're ready to start drawing ready to start doing uh, fun stuff uh, that's very easy to do hopefully